Now, more generally, if you had a continuum of types, that is, you have all kinds of different consumers and firms, what we're going to end up. Oh. Now, one thing interesting about my equilibrium locus here is you'll notice, if we go back to my original problem, from here to here, we follow the consumer's curve. From here to here, we follow the producer's curve, right? Because that's who had to be indifferent across those two regions. This types of consumers, uh, did I do that right? No, this one is across the consumer. Yeah, we're following the producer's curve because I had to induce the same producer to sell the two consumers. Here, I follow the consumer's curve because I had to induce the same consumer to buy from two different producers, right? That's why you have to follow one side or the other. If you had like a whole bunch of types on both sides, more generally, you end up with some kind of an equilibrium that looks like this. There's some P of Q function in equilibrium. And the consumers are tangent from below, and the producers are tangent from above, like that. And they're matched up. That is, there's a matching going on between the consumers and the firm, where the guys with the, with the high cost of quality are selling to the guys with the low value of quality. Right? The guys who want quality, don't want quality very much, buy from the guys who it's hard to make higher quality. And the same kind of equilibrium would occur. Again, there's like a boundary condition that sets this whole thing up, and then everybody sorts their way out up the curve. That's just a continuous version of what